Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So good to be here. I am back with another reaction. I am going to be checking out Native American slaves owners. And yeah, it's a forgotten history video and I'll be checking it out. I'm so interested in knowing more about slavery and history. And without further talking, let's dive right into it. Slavery is as old as civilization. Every culture and society practiced it and were also victims of it. The North American Indians were no different. Various tribes enslaved other tribes, usually through raids and after battles capturing their quarry. This included men, women, and children. Native Americans also captured whites and also had black slaves from the colonial period until the end of the Civil War. What I'm understanding with all these slavery things that when it used to happen, it was normal to people you know, like slavery was legal, it was normal, and they didn't see anything wrong with that, especially the fact that people who were, you know, enslaved were vulnerable people. And pe I felt people who were poor, who were not, um, you know, who are kind of less privileged in a way, and they do it openly, not even secretly and all that. So it's kind of, I just try to imagine how that was done you know, like a normal life then in those days. Many tribes practiced slavery. However, their primary practice was not based upon race, hmm. but more on their differences in tribal customs and the conflict between tribes over territory and resources. Yeah, that's what's surprising. Like, Many times slaves were taken to replace those who had been killed, especially as laborers. Children who were orphaned were usually brought up within the tribe as their own without distinction. This was also true of white captives, such as the famous story of Comanche chief Quanah Parker's mother. She was captured as a young girl and brought up as Comanche, and when forcibly returned to white society, she could not assimilate. But many Indian cultures captured or accepted runaway black slaves, and not all tribes treated them the same way. It was not uncommon and chronicled by the French that the Iroquois tribes were rather ruthless in the rage to capture slaves, black or white. And the captives often underwent very long, painful, and humiliating torture sessions to break their spirits. New York requested, as a requirement of treaties with the Huron and Delaware tribes, that they had to return escaped slaves. Yet the record does not reflect that any were in fact returned. Mm, really? In fact, those that we call the five civilized tribes in the southeast United States, which were actually given that name due to their adoption of many European cultural values, to increase centralized forms of representative government, conversion to Christianity, education and literacy, intermarriage with whites, and of course, their participation in the ownership of black slaves. Much of this cultural assimilation was due to the belief by the tribes that if they acquiesced and adopted European methods, then they would not be persecuted themselves and pushed off their lands. These Native American groups primarily included the nations in the Southeast, such as the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, Choctaw Creek, and Seminole. I'm listening to all these names and I'm just kind of thinking in my, my mind, I'm wondering every tribe then had like slaves. You know, they were involved in slave trade and slavery and also made to understand that some of them were brutal with you know handling slaves than other tribes you know as well i just don't know how normal that that really is you know like i said previous previously in some of my other videos it feels like the lives then were kind of worthless especially the lives of the slaves, the vulnerable people who they take, because it was said it was not by race, not like a race, a racial thing. Slavery depended on vulnerability, like if you're vulnerable. These Native American groups primarily included the nations in the Southeast, such as the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, Choctaw Creek, and Seminole tribes. Names I've never heard before. I... Ironically, only the Chickasaw and Choctaw failed to free all of the people they held in captivity until 1866, after the Civil War, when the federal government had to step in. By the 18th century, many Native Americans owned black slaves, and some tribes, such as the Catawba and Cherokee, were notorious for their dislike of blacks. Hence, oh their God. slaves were not normally assimilated, but worked like common laborers under often harsh conditions. 
That's what I'm talking about, like the harsh conditions, the maltreatment of slaves, of these humans you purchase or you buy that are vulnerable, that, that somehow they're the ones doing all the job you need to do and they're being maltreated, beaten, flogged and tortured just to break them. Some of them were unfortunate that some tribes never liked like black slaves and those people fall into the wrong hands and they're being more maltreated and treated badly and still gets to do the work or whatever they're used for. And then looking at the photos and the pictures, even though they're like, you know, a bit sketchy, you get to imagine how real it was then, how chained and bounded they really were at that time. You know, it felt like they were animals, treated mean like animals. I'm sure maybe animals might be like treated better at that time. I really don't know, but looking at these pictures gives me like the goosebumps and like very scary how it was then. For their dislike of blacks, hence their slaves were not normally assimilated, but worked like common laborers under often harsh conditions. The Cherokee were also famous for owning the largest number of black slaves purchased from white slave traders in the colonial period. It is recorded that in 1809, the Cherokee owned nearly 600 black slaves. Another unique fact was that the Cherokee Constitution did not recognize the children of black women as members of the nation. The Cherokee That's did not so recognize sad. formal marriages between their people and the black slaves in the Cherokee Act of Union in 1839, and this was revised in 1855. It should be noted that there was a sect within the Cherokee called the Kitoa Society, which was a secret abolitionist organization mm. that ran its own underground railroad and protected runaway slaves. Oh, that's so interesting. The Chickasaw produced cotton, corn, tobacco, livestock. So which means this particular set of people didn't really agree with slavery in a way and they kind of have like a, a secret organization that, you know, helps and um, save those slaves that escape from their owners and all that. So it's interesting to know that even at that time, there were people who were, you know, not in support of the slavery. I guess they see the maltreatment and, you know, mishandling of um, human and lives and they kind of set themselves aside. They had like good minds to help other people who were kind of suffering then. And it had to be like, a secret organization, secret group that did everything like um, on the ground so no one gets to know. So it's like slavery was so legal and so right that no one really cared. And for you to do the right thing by trying to save a slave, it's like you doing it hiddenly for the public not to even get to know about it. I really, wow, that's crazy, you know. The Chickasaw produced cotton, corn, tobacco, livestock, and poultry for self-consumption, but also to sell on the open market to white Americans. Their use of black slave labor assisted in these projects, being that they were an agrarian-based economy. The Chickasaw also gave greater value to white mixed members over those who were black mixed. The Creek Nation had many interactions with blacks, and some took runaway slaves into their protection. Although they still consider them inferior due to the type of field work that the men had to do on the plantations. Mm -hmm. Many blacks would become Creek slaves, or in some cases, the Creeks would sell the runaways back to their white owners. Where it is estimated that 10% of the Creek nation were black slaves. Wow. The Choctaw in Georgia, in their 1840 constitution, did not hear. allow freed blacks or runaways to settle within Choctaw territory, meaning that they were not allowed to own land. But white men could and often did get permission in writing from the tribal chief or United States agent in charge to live within the Choctaw Nation. Blacks or their offspring were not allowed to become citizens of the nation or hold office. But this was not true of Choctaw white men married to Choctaw women, and their children were considered members who could then become citizens. The Choctaw also began to have an abrasive relationship the Christian missionaries who arrived and built churches and schools, mm. and this was tolerated until the missionaries began preaching that slavery in its entirety was antithetical to Christian values. Then the missionaries were politely told to leave. 
The Choctaw, like the majority of white slave owners, did not want their slaves literate. Well, that's interesting to know. Even when they tried, like the Christians, you know, came in to kind of try to change things for the better, they were asked, like, politely to, to evacuate, like, to leave, you know, because they don't want to lose their slaves. What hope those slaves had, if they had, like, hope to ever get set free because it felt like you escape from your owners and you fall into another kind of you know maybe worse than where you were because if slavery was like generally like a, a general thing every tribe had slaves so you could escape from one and fall into the other one like i don't know it was like a prison i felt like i'm feeling like it was like a prison you can't just escape. Some of these slave owner chiefs were also mixed Indian and black, such as the father of Medal of Honor recipient mm. Pompey Factor, who was himself a black Seminole. The Seminoles were generally the most relaxed in their relations with the black slaves, and they generally welcomed them into their tribes. Mm. And the children of the mixed race children were usually treated no differently than the other members. With Pompey That's Factor's father being a prime example, but this was not universal. Seminoles still raided plantations and took both black and white slaves. And many black slaves ran away to join the Seminoles, believing that they would have a better life. This was true until the end of the first Seminole War, after which the practice became too risky and the black runaways were often returned to avoid retribution from their white owners. Many of these Indians still owned their slaves, even as they were themselves being pushed onto reservations. Hmm. The Seminoles were then thrown onto creek lands, the Creek and other tribes raided Seminole properties to steal their slaves. It well, was these actions that saw Factor's family and others escape into Mexico where, where slavery was slaves. illegal. There were the tribes that did not own slaves of any kind, mm. let alone blacks, who gave runaway sanctuary and made them part of their tribes. Some whites disapproved of the lenient treatment given to the blacks by their Indian benefactors and owners. One government official a white Indian agent named Douglas Cooper was somewhat disturbed by the relaxed, lenient, and almost equal treatment of blacks held by some Indian tribes that he suggested to these tribes that they should invite white men in to teach them the proper method of handling the Negroes. Wow, really? It is known that some Native American women bought male slaves, then freed them, married them, and then their children were born free according to the laws in the 18th century. As one may imagine, this practice was somewhat frowned upon by many in the slaveholding states later. That is so much, so much. The practice of Native there. American slavery was as diverse as it was common among their contemporaries. Some tribes had laws and councils that adjudicated the status of black slaves and even hmm. white slaves. The treatment of black slaves among their Native American owners was just as diverse when compared to whites, depending upon the tribe in question. But it is irrefutable that Native Americans, while not in their majority, were deeply involved in the black slave trade in varying degrees. So much to learn from this history, you know, documentaries, and you know, especially when it comes to slavery, you know, the stories like, are like surprisingly like, like mind blowing when you get to listen to how slavery and everything was done in those days as early as the is it 18s 1800s and how how it all started it's crazy and hearing about the 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 maltreatment how they treat other slaves even though it was like a general thing some particular tribes were more lenient with other slaves. And I noticed, like, I have always felt like blacks were treated worse. Some other tribes were, you know, less, um, you know, hateful towards the black slaves. They treated them better in a way. It's just something that blows my mind. Like, you feel like you just hearing like a story, like a fictional story that never really happened. But these are like reality, these are like real life events. And it's so sad that even today in our recent times, slavery still happens. It's still somewhere, it's still living, it's still around us. We're living in it. And even though it's illegal, people still do it. I don't know how comfortable those people who are into slavery 
how comf comfortable they, they are treating human less human in a way because I just don't know how you take a human being as a commodity, you sell them for ransom, for money, for goods, and it's just so heartbreaking, you know, getting to know all this. But it's also interesting to know, finding out all the history, the real life things, things that you, you think never happened, that you feel maybe it's like a, just a story. I always get to learn more when I, you know, listen and watch this history, historical documentaries and oh, it's really interesting. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for hanging and checking out this with me. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all in my next video. From me, it's bye.